Okay, I put my screen on your screen in a window again. Um, let me get my virtual machines back here. Um, okay. Okay, next thing I want to talk about today is working with organizational structures and organizational units and um, sort of the e-directory aspect of things. Um, before I get into that, I just want to talk about what the directory is to begin with. Um, when we, we looked at before, we looked at working with servers individually. Um, when servers first came out, it was sort of like, you know, how do I manage this server? How do I manage that server? When we did that, we had different accounts on all those servers. It was really hard to manage and maintain. Thus, the advent of the directory. Um, E-Directory is Novell's version of that. Active Directory is Windows version of that. Um, Linux has um, some directory services as well. Um, there's some lightweight directory access protocols called LDAP. So there's lots of directories out there. So it's not just anything unique to Novell or Microsoft or any one area. Um, but they each have their own. There are some that sort of overlap and use some standards. In fact, eDirectory is based on the x.500 standard, which has been used in Unix forever, for years and years and years. Um, what's really nice about it is it's, it's extremely reliable. Um, it can be distributed and across multiple networks and just just very redundant. Um, there's no single point of failure um, because we have replicas and partitions and all that kind of stuff all across there. Um, <coughs> let's see. Um, that'll, we'll actually get to play with replicas and partitions a little bit later on. Let me see if I can draw this. I'm going to see. Just see. I got a little thrown off with the other technical issues. Okay, let me see if I can. Technology days. Choose a blank piece, and that's obviously not going to work. So we will skip that. Um, I'll just talk you through this since I'm not going to have to show very easily on the screen. Um, if we have a single server, the database needs to exist somewhere, so the database is on that server. Um, it's not tied to that server. I mean, it doesn't only manage that server. If I have multiple servers, if I have a second server, it, people access that database to access those two servers, if I have three servers and so on. Um, you do want some redundancy in there because if that one server does, in fact, go down, uh, the database is not available anymore. And so, therefore, you can't access any of, the, any of those services and any of those devices. So, as you roll out more servers, as you roll out a second server and a third server, it ends up what's called um, putting replicas of that database out onto those multiple servers. That gives a little fault tolerance, first of all. So, if the first server goes down, it doesn't make any difference because um, I have another database, copy the database to access to actually do the logging in. Um, it also helps load balance. So if you have 10 people trying to log in at the same time, instead of all hitting the same server at the same time, it's just doing a general request saying, hey, what, where's the database out there? Where's the directory that you need to log into? And one replies and says, hey, I'm available. Well, while it's busy, another one might reply and say, hey, now I'm available. So you can really spread out those logins across multiple devices. You can even do it, the advantages of that um, are 
say you have remote offices, one in Los Angeles and one in New York, and you know the people, you know, if the database is sitting in um, Los Angeles, every time that the people in New York want to log in, it actually goes all the way from New York to Los Angeles to the directory, and then all the requests go back to the New York office. You can put a replica in both offices, New York and in, and in Los Angeles. So when you're in New York, you're obviously going to hit your local database uh, or your local directory, and the New York the New York people access the New York database. The Los Angeles people access the New, uh, Los Angeles database, but they're full databases. I mean, so they're both copies. So even if I went from office to office, I'm still logging in. They keep them replicated. It keeps synchronizing constantly as you make changes, as account user settings get changed, or rights or permissions or whatever gets changed. Um, they get synchronized across all of those directories all the time. So therefore, I mean, it, you almost would think that you put the database or the directory on every server. You know, once you get to three, four, five, you know, how much redundancy do you need? What's the likelihood that you're going to have five systems go down? And then you're realizing that all five of them have to keep synchronized all the time. And if they're across slow WAN links, um, it could take, you know, take up a lot of traffic doing that. So typically you'd have three, four, five types of, um, or copies of your replicas of your directory so that you can access it um, and have the redundancy but not have an overwhelming of synchronization. You could put more if you have good high-speed links, um, but maybe not necessary. Um, a partition um, is another term, and we'll be looking at a partition later on today specifically as we work with organizational units. Um, a partition is a part of the database. So say you do have a small branch office in in Sheboygan, um, you not you may not want to replicate the entire you know international Acme Corporation directory. Maybe you just want to take a portion of that directory and sort of chop it apart or take it apart and move that to Sheboygan. So when you're logging in as a Sheboygan person, obviously you would just access your local directory and you have all the services. It's still tied to the main. Uh, directory and so you still get access to all, this, all the resources and services but you're not having to replicate the entire database back and forth. So a replica is a complete copy of your databases or your directories. You keep interchanging them. Your directory where a partition is just only using a part of that directory. That's going to come in later on um, when we try to move organizational units. What do we mean by organizational units? Um, well, it actually comes um, into the objects that we work with the with our directory. We have three different kinds of objects in our directory. The one is the root. And in fact, um, let me start showing you some of this stuff. Maybe it makes a little more sense if you can see it at the same time. So if we're in our management services, And I go to iManager. I'm going to log in. We can start to navigate and work with our directory uh, a couple different ways. Right under roles and tasks, we have directory administration, um, e directory maintenance, and those kinds of things. We'll come back to this. Right now, we will go right to the directory, though. An easier way to manage it is to see the whole directory you know, together. If we look across the top, we have different icons. We have the Home button. We have an Exit button. Uh, we have Roles and Tasks, which is the default. And then we have View Objects. If I click on View Objects, on the left-hand side, you should be able to see the actual whole, whole organization. Um, your whole directory, which includes your organization. Um, we start with the root. The root uh, looks like a tree. In this case, it's the Benfield tree. Um, there's only one. Um, there's only one root to the whole to the whole directory. And in this case, it's Benfield tree. Um, you can't have more than them. Underneath that, you end up starting to have containers. 
And it's almost like the file and folder directory structure of a Windows Explorer, a Windows computer. So you have the root of the computer, and then you have files and folders under there. The only difference is, is that you can't have what would be equivalent to files under the root. You can only have what would be equivalent to folders, which is containers. It even gets a little bit more trickier than that. You can't put any kind of container in there. You can only put certain kinds of containers in there. And we're going to start out always with the organization container. So right now I have an organization container called Benfield. We created that during the installation process. Um, it said, hey, where are you going to put your admin user? Well, you had to create a container to put them in because you can't put admin in the root. Admin would be equivalent to your files in a directory structure. Those, by the way, are called leaf objects. So we have root objects, which is only one. Container objects, which are equivalent to directories. And then we have leaf objects, which are equivalent to um, files, if you want to think of it that way. Containers can contain other containers, or they can contain leaf objects. Leaf objects can't contain anything. They are the end result. Um, to work with this, if I want to look at the Benfield tree, um, I have one organization underneath here. If I wanted to do something, I do it all on the right-hand side. I can click under New, and I can create a new object under the tree. And it's a pretty limited list. And most of these things we don't even use. The only thing that we're really concerned about is an organization. Right now, that organization called Benfield, but I could create another organization called, you know, Acme. So within, under the same root, I have two containers now, two organizations specifically, one called Acme and one called Benfield. Underneath there, we can have more containers. Um, underneath Benfield, if I open up Benfield right now, you're going to see that I do have other containers and I have some leaf objects. These leaf objects specifically are volumes. They look like a little filing cabinet and they're named our volumes. Our admin volume, our data volume, our home volume, and our sys volume. Um, if I were to take a look at those, I could. I could click under data and then over here data and I can see my files and folders over here. We'll get to explore this a little bit later on a little bit more. Um, right now I just want to show that they're there. This is a container though. It's called an organizational unit. We often equate organizational units with departments. It really makes the easiest way of thinking that way. So under the Acme Corporation, right now I have nothing under Acme. I can create a new organizational unit. I need to create a new object. And now I have a longer list. So once you have the organization created, now you have lots more things you can put under there. You can put other containers or you can put leaf objects. That was not the case underneath the organization. You could only put uh, underneath the root. You can only put organizations underneath the root. Once you have an organization, now you can put other things here. We're going to, again, make it very, very simple. We're going to be concentrating on organizations and organizational units today. Click in on an organizational unit. What do you want to call it under Acme? You know, well, let's just use our typical company. And I'm going to be putting sales. What's nice about this is that you have a repeat task. If you create one organizational unit, you might want to create another one. You know, it's just prompting you for it. You don't have to. You could just click OK. Or you click Repeat Task. And I could put um, Human Resources and repeat the task again for maybe IT and maybe again for, oh, I don't know, Marketing. And that's all I'm going to do. You can see it's sort of building your organizational units underneath here then. So that's how you create organizational units. So we're going to work with containers to begin with. I create an organization underneath the root, organizational units underneath an organization. What are the things going to do with those objects? Well, we can manipulate them somewhat. Um, we can rename them. So if I wanted IT, to be changed to something else. This is where it gets a little tricky and you know, paying attention to this, is that if you want to manipulate the current level, which is IT, you actually have to check the 
checkbox. And then you can look under edit or new or actions. Almost everything that we do is under actions. We either create new things or we do something with them, um, such as rename the object. It comes up with its full of distinguished name, it.acme. It's new name, say we want to make it to is, and I click OK. And an object name could not be found. That's interesting. Oh, where do we go here? Well, it changed it. I'm not sure. <clears throat> Let's just try that again. Let's change it back. It was IS. I'm changing it to IT. I don't know. I'm not sure what that error message was. Rename the object or rename it back to IS. Oh, it's working fine. Um, so you can rename the um, containers. Another thing you can do is delete the container. And that's pretty obvious. Say that marketing um, it's kind of, I don't know, marketing. We'll get rid of marketing. I can delete marketing. Um, a little pop-up came up in the corner. It says the pop-up is blocked. This is where it gets a little frustrating with pop-ups. Um, is that the best way is just to turn off all your pop-ups, um, your blockers, because there's a lot of pop-ups that come up and you have to like verify them all. Always allow pop-ups. I thought I had done that already. And then I can, um, you could turn them all, it should be all allow. Good. Okay. <clears throat> And then here's a general message. Do you want to continue deleting the object? Yes, I do. And then it deletes marketing. If it has objects in it, like if you had users in there or other organizational units or some containers underneath there, it's going to um, not delete those. You have to have an empty container before you can delete them. <clears throat> it's almost like in the DOS days or in the con command line interface for Windows. Um, you can't remove a directory until that directory is completely empty. Um, that's not the case when we're working with directories in the remote manager. We could just delete entire directory structure very, very easily. Um, we can rename. Um, let's see here. Um, other things we can do is create sub-organizational units. So say underneath sales, if I use the example of east and west, um, within sales, I can create an object and create an organizational unit. There are several organizational items, organizational person, organizational role, and organizational unit. Make sure that you're always choosing organizational role for the container. Roles for the organizational unit for all of these containers. Roles and persons are actually leaf objects, and we will be working with organizational roles later in the semester. I can create an east under sales, and I can repeat the task, and I can put west under sales. You can start to see the directory structure, or the container structure on the left-hand side. Um, what ends up getting a little confusing is when we start working with directories and containers, because it's the same structure. You're going to say, I thought I created the structure, and you did, but you may have created it in the file system but you may not have created in the organizational unit structure, the directory, the e-directory structure. Also, later on, we work with rights and file security and trustee rights and all that kind of stuff. You're going to say, I thought I did it over there, or why isn't this option there or something? It's because the file directory structure is going to look identical to our e-directory structure, and it's just a matter of keeping track of where you are. The e-directory keeps track of people and organizes people and things. The file directory structure organizes and keeps track of files. So is it Nancy that I'm trying to manage or is it Nancy's files? Is it accounting or the accounting files? And so really try and keep those apart. If they do use nice symbols here. These are, if you worked with organizational charts at all, you know, these are pretty typical symbols for um, an organization, sort of a top-down org chart type look. So it doesn't look anything like a folder. 
So if anything, just look at the icons and you're going to see that it doesn't look like a folder, um, which the file system um, icons are all going to look like. <clears throat> Okay, um, let's see. Let's create another organizational unit. And we'll call it finance. <clears throat> and let's see here. I'll, I'll add another new one called accounting. So finance and accounting. Now, if these are completely populated like they normally would, um, just deleting them and recreating them may not be quite so easy. We might want to move them. So that accounting needs to become part of finance. That accounting is just an aspect of finance. We have a finance director, um, and accounting is just an aspect of the finance. So not have a completely different part department, but have it as a sub department or something underneath there. This is one thing that's a little, a um, little bit more difficult to do. Is you can't move containers. Um, it's not like the file system where it's just an entry into the file allocation table. These are huge, massive, very structured databases, and moving containers around is a little bit more than just moving a file entry in a table around. Um, so it's a little more complicated. This is where replicas actually come into place and help us. So when we have a replica, we're actually taking part of the tree and breaking it off into a separate database. So we have a large mass of database that has everything in it, and we're going to take a chunk of it out and make it into its own little file. Once it's its own little file, we can actually slide it around wherever we want because it doesn't have all those links, those, those embedded links, back to the main directory. Once it gets to where it wants to be, then I can you know, embed it back in or merge it back in. So let me show you the steps of doing this. If we need to do it multiple times, we will. Um, it can be a little tricky. Okay, I want to move accounting underneath finance. So the first step I'd have to do is actually um, make accounting its own partition. So I click on accounting because that's what I'm working with. And I go under actions. Like I said, most of the stuff is underneath actions. I want to create a partition. I want to create a database partition or a directory partition of just the accounting container and everything that's underneath it. So again, think of these as massive organizational units with tons of or sub organizational units and tons of people and all kinds of stuff underneath it. <clears throat> okay, how do you want to? What do you want to create the new partition uh, from account? from account.acme. Right now it's building a new database, breaking all those hard ties, and just putting in links between the two databases. So it is still part of it. A user under accounting would not know any difference. There's no difference whatsoever to a user under accounting right now. As they log in, it's just going to be you know, just there for them. But because it's its own partition, and you can see that because of the little icon there, I can now have an option which I don't have for other ones. Let me click on Finance. And if I look under Actions, I don't have Move. There's no Move option. I can copy it um, and then delete an existing one. I can create new ones. I can modify the trustees and all kinds of stuff or rename it. But I can't move it. Let me click on Accounting instead. And now I have an option to move a partition because there's just software ties between the two databases, two directories right now. And so it's a little bit more flexible. And that's what we use to our advantage then. So I move the partition. Where do you want to move it to? I want to move it underneath finance. So again, I use my object selector. And I want to go under Benfield or Acme. It's going to be under Acme and I want to click on finance. So I want to move the accounting underneath finance. I go ahead and click OK. It verifies that I want to move. Uh, this is where it's checking all the servers wherever there are replicas. If there are multiple servers where there's replicas, which in most places there would be, they would all be listed here 
and their status would also be listed here. If something is red or yellow or red or the server's not available or it's down, the move won't be able to complete. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to send out the request, but it's going to sit out there until all the servers have been replicated. Fortunately, we only have one to work with, so it makes it kind of easy for us. So screen status, everything's good. I'm going to click move, and it's moved. Um, I can actually, I have to refresh by, you know, clicking back under Acme. But now if I look under finance, I have accounting underneath finance. Click back up a directory and then down under finance. I can just leave it that way. There's nothing wrong with leaving it that way. If I want to tie it all back together though, I can merge it back in by clicking on the accounting organizational unit and then I can merge the partition back. Now it's making all those hard ties back into the directory and it's becoming part of the directory again. And it's complete. The little partition symbol went away and so now you can see it's just part of this directory. Let me refresh that. Finance, accounting, HR, IS, sales. Last week, what we did in the afternoon class is we worked with um, the NFL and used that as a directory structure. Um, let's go ahead and practice that together of actually creating an organization, um, the NFL, and sort of the organizational units underneath there. So um, for those of you who can access your tree, if you click on your tree, I want you to go into New and then create an object. And we're we'll creating a new organization. We'll type the NFL. Now, how is NFL broken up? AFC and NFC? So, we're going to create a new an object, create a new object in an organizational unit then underneath there. And it's going to be what? AFC. AFC. I can click OK. And in, because I'm going to create another one at the same level, I can click on repeat task. Is the NFC. And so now I have NFL and then AFC and NFC. You good with that? Okay, let's start with the AFC. How is the AFC broken up then? Okay, and what are the divisions? North, south, east, and west. North, repeat the task. South, okay. Repeat the task. East. Okay. Repeat the task. And West. Okay. Repeat the task. And then I didn't have to repeat the task. Just click OK the last time. So North, South, East, and West. It does it alphabetically, so it becomes East, North, South, West. And you can see that's broken across out on the other left hand side. I can do the exact same thing under NFC. Is it the same divisions, north, south, east, and west? Okay. Um, being a web browser, if it remembers your previous dialog boxes, this is not a Novell thing, this is a browser thing. If you start typing things in, you're going to see that some of the things you're able to repeat on here. Um, so if I type north, it's going to see that, oh yeah, north is there. So you can click on here for north. 
repeat the task, type, start typing in south, and I can pull from the list here. East and west, and just okay, you don't have to click repeat. So north, south, east, and west. So it's pretty easy to create the directory structure. We already worked with the concepts of how to look at an organizational chart like Garopa and sort of place everything where it needs to be, and we sort of follow the chart. That's all we're doing here. We're just taking a logical organization and just implementing it. Um, in our Garopa, we have you know sales, and underneath sales, we have two divisions of the sales. We have an eastern division and a western sales division. And so we just create another organizational unit underneath there. Um, so it's very, very much the same. You know, Acme is kind of just like what we worked with for Gropa. Um, under sales, I have an east and west. Um, under AFC, north, south, east, and west. Under NFL. Now, underneath each of these is where we end up putting our leaf objects, which in our example here would be teams or individual users is what we think about. Um, I guess we could actually break it down by team if we wanted to. You know, you could put a team on there as another organizational unit, and then the players could be the users. Um, so I don't know. Let's try that. What what what's a team that we could put somewhere? Put NFC, North. NFC North. A new object, organizational unit, and what could we call? What's a North? Hackers. Okay. Could the Packers be broken up by anything if we think of as the players being the ultimate users? Can we divide it up into ultimate players, offense, defense? Oh. Well, we could do. Okay, would you do coaches, players, or would you do. Offense, defense, so you or well, coaches, players, and then under players you would go offense, defense, special teams, and probably the same both coaches. Okay. Under players, offense, S E or C E. So offense and defense underneath players, and you know you could break it down further and further and further of how you want to organize it, and you could do this for all the teams everywhere. What'd be nice is that you could know exactly where everybody was, and you could later on when we work with rights. This is going to be very important. You know we might want to have certain rights for the offense compared to the defense. We might want to have to see different things or do different things, um, have access to different files or folders. Um, so whenever you're looking at organizational unit structure, we really want to be thinking about ultimate security. Is there a reason that these people should be together? Uh, or do I want to break them down further to make it easier for, for security later on? Um, a perfect example is under accounting. Under accounting, we have accounts payable and accounts receivable. It's only four people. We could really throw everybody under accounting. But again, thinking ahead, we really need to be keeping payables and receivables separate. You know, they need to have different rights and different accesses to different stuff. They shouldn't be able to share. So even though there's only four people, you probably want to break them up early on right in the organizational unit structure so that later on when it comes to security, it's sort of all in place for you. You don't have to like choose and make special groups or do anything. You just choose it by that organizational unit. Um, same thing with sales. You know, if I'm really keeping the eastern and western divisions separate for whatever reason in sales, you know, well, let me make organizational units for them. If that was not the case, then there really wouldn't be a need for that. Um, if all the salespeople truly worked everything together, or everybody in accounting did everything for each other, then yeah, don't break it up further than it needs to be broken up. Just break it up far enough for security later on when we work with files. To help you organize that. Does that make sense? A little bit? 
when we put this all together, hopefully it will. And then, you know, as we start applying security, you're going to say, oh, why didn't I do that? Change it. You can always move the people around, move the files around, move the organizational structures around, do whatever you need to do to do that. So, question was? I was just thinking, like, let's say, for instance, in early Packers and players. Yes. Let's say you have the office, you want to give the office access to the office. Players. Yes. Yes. Well, let's say you wanted to give one guy on the office the ability to write plays in that role. Could you give just that one guy? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, we're going to do scenarios just like I'm going to give the NFL thing. That's a really cool example. Um, exactly what you're saying. We wouldn't give it to that person because that person could change. Players don't stay forever. Right. So you put um, a quarterback position. Yes. Right. Absolutely, and that's exactly what we do later on. That's where roles come in. So there is a role of quarterback or 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 of of playmaker. So um, inside of offense, you would have roles of quarterback, running back. Yes. And then the yes. people, the users, could be fluid and role. Absolutely, players. absolutely. Or like when I played high school football, you did end guard, tackle, quarterback. <laughs> so he was very, very fluid. You know. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> it's a lot of material, and it's, it's not something you're probably used to or familiar with. Um, kind of overwhelming a little bit. Um, hopefully it's not. It's I'm trying to make it as straightforward as possible. Within our tree, within our directory, we start with organizations. And normally you have one organization. Um, I've never seen a tree that had more than one organization in it, such as LTC, such as you know um, Miro when we had it, the Chicago Board of Trade, um, all the places I've worked that had it. Um, you have one organization that goes with it. Thanks, Dale. Underneath that, then, is where you break it down into organizational units, and organizational units are your departments, then. And then sub departments, and you know, I really like the you know how the the NFL is really breaking down into you know players, offense, defense, special teams, whatever, and you know we'll we'll probably play with that scenario a little bit more this semester because it can go quite deep quite easily. So, questions that you have though of what we've covered so far. Okay. I'm not going to spend a lot more time on organizational structure um, because I think you know how to do it. Um, I'd probably, if I were you, I'd be practicing um, working with um, the GROPA structure, how to implement it. If you want to go over that with me, I can certainly go over that with you. Um, but pretty much the same that you built it for the file structure. The biggest, the biggest catch on there is the president is not in a container that everybody else is in. Well, let me rephrase that. Accounting is not in the president container, even though it looks like that on the org chart. It would be just like the file system. You have the root, and then you have accounting and sales and president all as equal or peer directories. It's the same thing in organizational units. Um, we do not put accounting under president. This will be a huge mess later on when we try to secure president and also we have all these subcontainers under there where it's all flowing or whatever. So, okay, go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about just general iManager stuff, some naming, how naming gets placed in here, and a little bit more, um, more general background information to help you later on. Um, and let's see what else was on the list. I thought there was one more thing. No, that should be it then. Just going through iManager a little bit more and naming. So, okay, go ahead and take a break. <laughs>